Our gospel reading for this Sunday comes from the book of Luke. And I'm reading in chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. Here, Luke's interpretation of the, of the resurrection story. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and crucified, and on the third day he would rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them nonsense, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up, ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, puzzled at what had happened. This is the word of your Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, hallelujah, he is risen, boom, oh yeah. We waited five long weeks for this. Yes, we kind of trailed our way through reflecting on our humanness. That's not very pleasant. And then week two, we found ourselves wandering a little bit. As we moved on through this Lenten season, we find ourselves wandering in the wilderness, contemplating, thinking about our life here on this earth. And then there's Jesus. And we followed him through the desert. We followed him through the town. We witnessed things that wouldn't even begin to make it on TV, as violent as it is today. And somehow, in the 21st century, 2019, we're supposed to also make sense of all this stuff because it's our historical heritage. Hmm. Let's go back to the first century. We can't really blame those disciples and friends for not believing the women, right? After all, the text said this morning, their words seemed like nonsense to the disciples when the women went back and said, he's gone. He's, th- there was two, two guys in, in this dazzling figure, and we were terrified, and we bowed down, but we remember that he reminded us, Jesus told us this was going to happen. And again, the disciples and the friends go, are you sure? It really, uh, you know, we, we love the man also. We walked with the man. We listened to his preaching and his teaching, but... You saw that we carried him and we laid him in the tomb and we helped roll that stone. And now you're telling us he's gone? Today, I believe that some might call what they heard in the first century our version of fake news. 
even when we've been told by credible authority it's true, and even when we, like Peter, see some evidence of the possibility that it's true. Don't sometimes we still wonder, maybe these women just thought that's what happened. We see the problem for those first responders that morning. And I think we see the problem in our society today. Question. Do you believe in honest to goodness acts of God? I think that's a good question to ask us on Easter morning, isn't it? And many of us would probably respond, yes, I believe in miracles. I would also. If I were to ask you, how many miracles have you seen? I believe that some of you would say, oh, I have witnessed one, two, or more in my own family. I can tell you that, Pastor. And I bet a few of you would respond, the Lions won a football game. Now that is a miracle. <laughs> can I get an amen? <laughs> you know, both those responses are examples of the English word miracle, but that's not exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not thinking about surprising events or long-shot victories. I'm thinking about those contrary to human understanding events that have no natural or logical explanation. Oh, you might say, that kind of miracle. Sure, I believe in that kind of miracle because this is the day that we celebrate that kind of miracle. But I'm wondering if you, like me at some point, deep down, you may be just a little uncertain of how that really could happen, even though we believe it did. The resurrection of Jesus is that kind of miracle. It is totally unexplainable by human or natural means. That may be why we don't talk about it all year long. We're not sure how it happened. Now, the crucifixion, we can understand. We saw the walk. We heard the nails. We watched him expire. We know his body was wrapped and secured and laid in the tomb. We know historically that there was that huge round stone that was rolled into its spot. We know that they left him dead. And indeed, he was. Now, Here's the proof that we like to dwell on the resurrection a little bit more. I'm sorry, <laughs> we like to dwell on the crucifixion because we can understand it a little more than the resurrection, which we don't. Hmm. You don't see a whole lot of people wearing little silver empty tombs around their neck. But by golly, anybody have a cross on today? we do see lots of people wearing the symbol of the crucifixion. Hmm. So I ask the question again, do you believe with your gut and your heart and your mind, especially the mind that gets in your way, of the greatest miracle of all time, the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Now, in case you think you have to answer yes just because you're in church, put your mind at ease. If you answer under your breath, I'm not sure, you're in good company. 
There are lots of people today who aren't sure whether they believe it or not. And there were lots of people on the first Easter Sunday who weren't sure either. Folks like Peter, James, John, Matthew, Bartholomew, Simon, and the others. Even the women who came up to the tomb that morning were confused. What they found was a large stone rolled away and an empty tomb and grave cloths. All four Gospels agree on that fact. These women, when they came that morning in the mist and the dew and the chilliness that morning, didn't have the slightest idea what happened there. They weren't looking for a resurrection. Mark's Gospel says even after the angel explained what happened to them in Mark 16, 8, they said, Mark says, they fled from the tomb trembling with fear. Very simply, nobody was expecting the resurrection. Now, remember I read, it's true. Jesus had predicted that he would be put to death and then raised to life. And he told his friends and he told his disciples who were to carry on his work that. But his followers really didn't get it. They were, at that morning, already grieving. They were in the middle of a deep grieving process. I ask you this morning to think in your lives, have any of you ever been in a deep grieving process after the funeral was done, after the body was buried? Then your work began as to how do I go on? Where is my hope? God, I believe in you, but I need you, and I feel alone. That's where all of the first century folks were that believed in Jesus Christ. They believed that he was a prophet. They believed that he was a good man. They saw him perform other acts of God in miracles. They had more proof. I'm jealous of them, actually because they were there. They got to see all that stuff firsthand. You think they would be like, boo rah, man, just like he said it was going to be. Yes, the rebob. And what do we find? What do we find? We find them all going, oh, I knew, I knew, I knew. We're, he, uh, there's nothing we can do. That's what we find on Easter Sunday morning. You know who really expected a resurrection? The Jewish leaders who persuaded the Roman uh, government to seal the tomb after it was rolled, the, the stone was rolled in place. Jesus' enemies feared something might happen. They didn't know what, but the enemies had to go and put a seal so they could make sure nothing funky was going on at that tomb. His friends and his believers weren't expecting anything. So you see, my friends, this day isn't just about resurrection pomp and circumstance. Although with relief, don't we? We sing with assured voices, Jesus Christ is risen today. And well, we should. It's also the best time to ask ourselves the question, do you actually believe in the event that we are celebrating today? The miracle of the rising from the dead. If you still answer, I'm not sure, then welcome this morning. It's okay to be an honest doubter. Remember one of the 12 named Thomas? If you came this morning doubting a little bit and you leave today, that's okay. When you're ready, your God will be there waiting for you. Some of you were at the memorial service of Ray Crane and you heard a doubter's story. 
over the course of 18 years, my communication with Ray went from, I don't believe in God. There can't be a God. A few years later, what I don't understand about God is this, and that, and the other. As it got near the end of his life, the comment changed to, now, I understand about God. I get that. I can see that. But this Holy Ghost thing really gives me a problem. <laughs> to the day before he passed, looking me straight in the eye and saying with a weak but angry voice, how can a God who is supposed to be all loving do that to his son? To his son, he said. To his final moments, as Elsie and I were on both sides of the bed, and he had been mumbling a little bit in the last couple hours, and we couldn't understand. And he went silent for quite a while, and you know how that is if you've ever been in those situations. You start paying acute attention to each breath and each sound. And for some reason, intuitively, Elsie and I both got up out of our chairs at the same time. And I walked to one side of the bed, and she walked to the other. And he mumbled, and we put our ears down. And what I thought I heard, I didn't believe. And so I didn't say anything because I didn't say anything. And we stood up, and Elsie leaned over and said to me, did you hear what I thought I heard? And I didn't say what it was. And she said, didn't he just say, heaven, it's beautiful, just like that. And I said, that is exactly what I heard. Amen. To this day, we both, without knowing what each other heard or thought they heard, heard exactly those same words, my friends, and it was exactly as clear as that with that tone of, it's so beautiful. 25 minutes later, there he was in the land that he didn't believe really existed. My friends, honest doubting, like Thomas, like Ray, and like others, leads, friends, leads to honest believing. Never give up. Never give up. You do not know the miracles of God. And yes, indeed, they happen all the time, every day, and only if you are willing to say, really? Yes. I will tell you, I will tell that story to the day I leave this earth, because it is just like the first responders this Easter morning when they ran, even though they were afraid and not sure what they heard and saw, ran back to tell their friends, this is what happened. And yes, you still may have the doubters that say, oh, you guys just didn't hear you know, the right thing. He was just delirious. Not a chance. Not a chance. So, can your faith be resurrected this day? Can your faith be spread this day? Can you walk in the steps of this life absolutely certain that Jesus Christ, your God, is part of a trinity of beautiful things that can enrich your life, that can grant you wisdom beyond your understanding, and that can give you strength and courage to walk in places you would never imagine you would walk in. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia.